money makes the world go round and there is no getting around that you have to spend money sometimes, a lot of times. But what about when you can't afford the thing that you want? Every single day you're going to see advertisements to buy things. And most of those advertisements are going to offer financing just in case you can't afford it. Whether it's afterpay for an online t-shirt or a car loan for a new car, there is no avoiding the offers to finance. So today we're going to talk about what to and what not to finance if you want to have a positive financial future and build wealth. Also, today's video is sponsored by VinoVest. Hi friends, if you are new here, I am Sarah, also known as Budget Girl here on the internet. And the only thing I ever really financed was my college education. But after paying off $33,000 on a tiny reporter's salary over three years, and now being in the financial space for almost eight years, I have learned a lot about the tactics that are used to get us to spend money and are used to just kind of trick us out of our hard earned cash. So today we're gonna to talk about the things that you should be financing potentially. I mean, always pay cash if you can and you want to, but what you should be financing and what you absolutely shouldn't if you can avoid it at all. And if you like learning personal finance for free, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the like button. So first off, why finance anything? It's not always feasible to pay cash for something. Inflation continues to chip away at your super hard earned money and recurring expenses, even like food and gas are getting more and more expensive, which likely is to leave less room in your checking account for things that you may want or need. While in an ideal world, we could pay cash for everything. It's just not the way life works. So here are a few things that you can finance with my personal blessing. Just kidding. You don't need my personal blessing. Here are some things where it might behoove you to finance. Generally, these are your stereotypical big purchases. I am not encouraging you to get into debt, but sometimes we have to. Number one is your house. And this is my only current debt. And that is what I have financed. If people could afford homes outright, they wouldn't sign up for 30 year mortgages. And there are even arguments in the financial space where if you wanted to pay for your house in cash, it's not going to appreciate as much over those terms as it would if you just paid essentially your mortgage payment and then invested the rest of the money that you had available to pay off the house sooner. You guys can argue about that in the comments, but I have seen the numbers and they are intriguing. Personally, I am only paying my mortgage payment towards my duplex. It's currently a cash flowing asset for me. So my mortgage is $1,600 a month. I make $1,740 a month. So I actually make $140 a month off of my investment with the taxes, mortgage, and everything paid. So for me, there's no particular reason to be throwing additional money to pay down that balance when it's actually giving me money every single month. I would rather accumulate that cash and wait for my next real estate purchase or potentially I'm not going to do this, but I would rather invest that money and let that appreciate rather than just pay down the actual balance. Are you team pay off the house early or let it ride? Let me know down below. And I do think there's a difference here depending on what type of real estate this you have. If you have like a personal home that you want to pay off early and just not have that payment anymore, that is a completely valid reasoning versus my investment property that is currently net positive. Thing you should finance number two, your legal defense. There are innumerable situations where you might find yourself in court over the course of your life. You could get sued, you could be in an accident and need a legal defense for that. You could be going through a divorce or any number of things. I'm not calling anybody a criminal, but you just might end up in court one day and your legal defense, which is something you have a right to, could potentially cost thousands of dollars that you might not have. It is okay to go into debt and have to do like a payoff plan for your legal defense. You have to look out for your future life and not necessarily just forego an attorney because you can't afford it in cash. Some of y'all are going to be shocked, but that's where the things to finance list ends. Next, what you should maybe finance, maybe not. Now everyone's circumstances are different, but there's a little bit more wiggle room in this category. So let's jump in. If you can avoid financing your education, I highly recommend it. I realize that's also not possible for anyone, but there are scholarships, there are grants, you can work through college. And at the very least, if you can avoid taking on additional student loan debt to live on, which is what this genius did at the time, you will have a lot less debt to then claw your way out of post-graduation when inevitably you'll be making the least you've ever made in your life. 
Do I recommend student loans? No. Do I recognize that it might be the only choice? Absolutely. But make sure that you take advantage of as many grants and scholarships as you can and don't just go into it thinking that I'll deal with this later. Future Sarah was not happy with past Sarah's decision on that. Before we get into the next one, let's talk briefly about our sponsor for today's video, Vinavest. Those of you who have followed my debt-free journey over the years know that I've gone from scrambling to pay off debt on a really, really low income to now having a net worth of over 200K, which is incredible. It has been such a journey of operating from a place of a lot of fear and anxiety about money to now having a lot more confidence in my abilities and experience and having more risk tolerance as well. I've also started have an interest in diversifying my assets, which is super fun. When you first start investing, it's completely normal to be worried about losing money. FYI, we here at Budget Girl recommend that most people start with an emergency fund, getting their employer match if available, and then maxing out a Roth IRA and maxing out a Roth IRA by investing in low cost index funds for long-term wealth. But once you've mastered that, and by the way, if you're not there yet, it doesn't take nearly as long as you think. You may want to start using your additional funds and try to grow wealth using more speculative investments and different asset classes. Personally, for my fun money investments, I own a lot of Home Depot stock because I spend a lot of time and money there and I want to support and invest in businesses that I frequent and believe in. I also do some real estate investing and I even own a little bit of crypto. I like to invest in the things that I find personal value and have interest in. This is where today's sponsor, VinaVest, comes in. You've probably heard of investing in gold or other precious metals, but have you heard of investing in wine? VinaVest is a service that uses an algorithm partnered with industry-leading sommeliers to pick wines for you to purchase as an investment. When those wines appreciate in value over time, you can choose to sell the wine and either pull out that cash or reinvest. When you sign up, their sommeliers will use their quantitative investment models to curate a wine portfolio for you of wines that you will actually own. And yes, you can actually order and drink the wine that you've invested in. Your money is going to be linked to the physical product of wine that has the intrinsic value. You can also buy and sell bottles whenever you like, and VinaVest handles all of the storage and the shipping. People have actually been drinking wine since before the biblical flood and investing in it for almost as long. Thomas Jefferson actually wrote about the appreciation of several Bordeaux wines in the 18th century. And while there is no section of the market which is immunized against risk, the wine industry has been historically recession resistant. Right now, YTD, which is the fine wine index, is actually up 5% while the S&P is down 11%. Vinavest has shown consistent safe growth of about 10.6% over the last 30 years. This particular asset class is not going to be for everyone, but if you love wine and would enjoy investing and making money in it, you can do so for as little as $70. Check them out at the link below. Now let's get back to the financing. The second thing you shouldn't finance, if at all possible, is your car. Car dealerships are notoriously predatory and maybe public transportation isn't a great reality in your area. Vehicles are, however, a depreciating asset. So it benefits you to buy lower cost cars. And yes, you can still find safe, lower cost cars and get out of a loan if you have one as quickly as possible. Personally, I've become a really big fan of salvage cars and almost all of the vehicles that I've purchased over my lifetime have been owner deals. The trick is to make sure that you get the car inspected at a reputable shop. Usually it costs around $100 and you can offer to pay for that and have them do a full front end body check and tell you everything that's wrong with that car. Don't just trust whatever the seller says or that it drives around the block okay. Personally, I love salvage cars, which is essentially when your car gets into an accident and the insurance doesn't want to pay to fix it, they might tag it out, even if the damage isn't that bad for several reasons. You may have in your insurance agreement that the insurance company has to provide a rental car for you and there may not be any available in the area. There may not be a shop nearby that can take on the body work or they may be maxed out. What happens with these damaged cars is then the insurance company cuts you a check and then they sell or auction those damaged cars. A lot of mechanics like to go pick up those cars, usually for about 500 to a thousand dollars, do the type of body work and repairs on them that they do during their day job at a shop that where they would be paid by insurance companies and fix it in their garage. <laughs> it's the same skilled professionals doing the type of work they're just doing it cheaper and then selling you the car fixed for a profit. You should still get it checked out. 
I bought two cars this way and I couldn't have been happier with them. They were done excellently. And the only difference is, is that you get a pink title instead of a blue one in my state. And you do have to pay cash for them because you can't necessarily get a car loan on a salvage vehicle. That might be for you if you're interested in how I pay the minimum on cars and even how I negotiate with dealerships and pay for cars in cash, you can check out the blog post below. The third thing you should maybe not finance is repairs. If you have to, you have to, but ideally if you're following the budget girl plan or the plan that most personal finance people recommend is covering general repairs, your home, your car, etc., with a emergency fund. If you don't have emergency fund, that should be priority number one, at least a little one. Finally, let's talk about things you should absolutely not finance. If the previous sections were an appetizer, here's the entree. Sorry, not sorry about some of these. First off, appliances. I've had to go to laundromats. I hate it. I can appreciate how much it sucks. However, I do not advocate going into debt over a washer dryer or similar. People offload these things all the time on social media. The deals are there, you just might have to look. Financing for things like appliances is often very high interest rates and you can generally get something that'll make do in the interim until you can save up for the full thing. Thing you shouldn't finance, number two, living things. Please don't finance a pet or a plant. If it's a pet, you can save up for it. If it's a plant, you can maybe get a clipping or do a trade or something. I, I'm in a few plant groups and people spend insane amount of monies for like pink princess plants and everything like that. Please don't finance a plant. Please don't finance a pet or a plant. Then you shouldn't finance number three, your vacation. We all need to get away and recharge but your cruise does not need to be repaid with interest and you don't necessarily need to come back from a vacation with the added bill every month that will then worry you and stress you out. Save up for vacations. Number four, renovations. Your new debt can be cash flowed. Number five, elective medical procedures. As someone who wears glasses, I empathize with wanting to get like LASIK, but I would never go into debt for something like LASIK or another cosmetic procedure. Number six, weddings. Money stress is one of the leading causes of divorce and a lot of people are out there just paying off debt from a wedding for a marriage they're not even in anymore. Please save up for your dream wedding or potentially scale down. After all, it is just one day. Married life is stressful enough without having to pay off wedding interest. And you can always have a small wedding and then save up for your five year anniversary celebration. Number seven, electronics. Please don't finance the new iPhone. Please don't. Cell phones, laptops, gaming systems have all gotten cheap enough that you should be able to cash flow them. Please don't finance the newest system and have to pay on that for years. By the time you pay it off, it'll probably already be broken or dead or outdated. Just go a few models down, pay cash. You'll never regret it. Number eight, daily life or everyday expenses. I know that Afterpay and Klarna are on every single like home decor, clothing website, everything like that now. And it's no interest and it's blah, 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 blah. But breaking down multiple items into a monthly bill that, that you then have to pay off is robbing you of your income that you will later need to pay other things. It can keep you from your goals. Just don't sign up for these little leeches on your income. Save up to pay for the clothing, everyday expenses, eating out, all of that. Anytime my credit card emails me saying like, your recent purchase qualifies for, you know, us to draw it out over time. They do this because they wanna charge you interest on it when you miss a payment. Or just, they want to get you in that cycle of debt. And next thing you know, you've got this multi hundred dollar expense every single month for stuff that you ate, wore, etc. months ago. Do not fall for this trap. So many people do, and it's a modern way to keep you in debt and from building wealth. Number nine, FOMO purchases, collectibles, and tchotchkes. If you can't cash flow these things, it's better to wait. I don't care if it's a Ray Dunn mug or a new collectible edition of a video game. The chances are is that eventually you'll be able to find it cheaper on Poshmark or Mercari or eBay, or you can find a knockoff somewhere. If you do not have the cash for collectibles or things like that, you just gotta wait. And number 10, I mentioned crypto earlier, but here is where I come for the crypto enthusiasts. Do not finance get rich quick schemes. The first rule of investing has always been to not invest what you cannot afford to lose. However, a lot of people have lost sight of that with the recent crypto and like NFT 
craze. If you're keen on investing, I'm not going to stop you, but do not borrow money to purchase speculative investments. Not every coin goes to the moon. A lot of them go straight to the grave. And so many people have lost so much money and gone into deep debt trying to chase get rich quick schemes. All right. Well, I'd love to know which of these you agree with and which you absolutely do not. Maybe you went into debt for a wedding and you don't regret it, but personal finance is personal. These are guidelines and are meant to educate and inform you while you're making your own decisions. So let's talk below about what you think you should finance and shouldn't finance. And if you'd like to check out Vinivest, they will be down there as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye.